Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to start the next session now. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Pierre Slemish, who will be speaking on open food facts, acting on the health environment impact of the food system. Hello, everyone. I just have a quick question. Uh, have any of you in the room used Nutri-Score to choose food products by raise of hand? Okay. So you'll see that Open Food Fact uh, is a, uh, a lit uh, has played a little part in uh, getting a Nutri-Score out. So let's start and let's dive right in. There's a lot on the menu. So uh, for those who don't know Open Food Fact, I'll briefly introduce it. I'll have a section on what's new in the project this year, what's cooking for next year, and also uh, we'll be able to do Q&A probably outdoors. So about Open Food Fact, it's, uh, so it's a project uh, uh, that we started 10 years ago, uh, so it's an NGO, and it tries to answer how do you choose the best product in the supermarket. A lot of information, uh, and it's not legible. I've never been able to understand the nutrition table. It's abstract art to me. So a uh, long ingredient list as well. Uh, and yet, food has a, a massive impact on public health. Uh, to give you an idea, obesity and overweight wipes 3% of, uh, yeah, uh, of our GDP uh, due to the cost of treating obesity and overweight. And the same goes for the planet. One quarter of food emission is food. One quarter of carbon emission. Um, so the idea of Open Food Act is to empower users and contributors who have an impact on their own health, on the environment, and on the health system at large. Our slogan, if you will, is don't panic, but organize. So crowdsourcing is a way to do that, mobile crowdsourcing. Um, and if Wikipedia was able to build uh, the largest encyclopedia on the planet, OpenStreetMap, the largest map, why not build the largest database of food products on the planet? Two days, 10 years in, we have 3 million products from under, uh, over 160 countries. Uh, main sources, crowdsourcing, so mo you and me using mobile, uh, but also the food industry, which has started to realize that uh, transparency in the end wins. Um, so the mobile app of Open Food Fact allows you to choose products that are good for you and the planet. You scan barcodes, you get Nutri-Score and Eco-Score. Uh, you also have a personal scan for those of you who have food allergies or want to go vegan. Uh, it will help you on the journey. It's, of course, privacy preserving. So it's a privacy by design. Uh, we don't require any login. And if you don't have a Nutri-Score in your country yet, you can get it on any product in a couple of seconds. You answer a few questions in the app, and you get the scores in instantaneously. So uh, you can take your health to the next level with Nutri-Score, uh, which is about the nutritional quality, and Nova, which is about uh, food ultra processing, so avoid Nova 4 products as much as you possibly can. Uh, we also do additives uh, and labels. And we make it simple to understand all of that. Um, with Nutri-Score, we started computing it uh, in 2015 when it was a scientific paper. It was called the Five Color Score. And now we compute it in every country, including Mexico and the United States. Um, everyone can get it, even if a producer don't want uh, you to get it. So we recompute it. Uh, we create an ecosystem around it. And the nice thing is that, as you all experienced, it's now in supermarkets in Europe. It's still not compulsory, though, and producers are beginning to improve their products. And we also uh, show EcoScore, uh, which is about the planet. So same principle. We use uh, something called life cycle analysis, which are very precise analysis of food products. So it's an average. And then on, to on top of the average, we make the computation more simple, uh, sorry, more precise to the products uh, using specific data. With EcoScore, the great news is that France will have an EcoScore, despite all the trouble uh, you are seeing right now in France. Uh, it's in low, so that's the cool news. It's beginning to be experimented in Belgium, in Colruyte. Um, and uh, it's also available in many European countries and the US. And so, yeah, we are spearheading a, a more global uh, discussion around it. Uh, in terms of impact, Open Food Fact uh, has quite a lot. Because we are open data, 
over 250 projects, application services, reuse uh, the data to inform users from a uh, um, question on, uh, on uh, a pregnancy, uh, allergies, etc. Even big corporations use it. In terms of impact, uh, we, it's, a it's a simple circle. We collect data using our mobile phone. Uh, people are more and more reusing that data to do many things, including scientific research. Uh, people get more educated, uh, more mindful about what they eat. Um, they start changing their behaviors, their, their purchase behavior, and the whole industry actually starts to follow. The producers are taking notice, uh, and uh, they are changing their uh, recipe as a result, and everyone benefits, and the circle goes on and on. So from uh, those kind of pho uh, Photoshop or GIMP uh, uh, images that we did a couple of years ago, uh, we, went back to we went straight to this, where the Nutri-Score is everywhere. So, yeah, you go from Perl code uh, to real-life impact, where basically uh, all uh, products, uh, all newly introduced products start to change for the better. What you can also see uh, across Europe is, for instance, the differences between in the food offer. On, uh, we take photos across space and time for 10 years, and we found out that the Fanta recipe changed across Europe. Uh, so, for instance, Italy, 12% fruit, Serbia, 3% fruit, uh, Portugal, 8% fruit, uh, fruit plus uh, high fructose corn syrup, and 0% fruit in the French island of Réunion. <laughs> so, uh, that's the kind of thing you can do with data. Um, we can also have a giant map of food factories in Europe. Uh, so, that's, that's May near me. And uh, all the packaging code you see on food products I, we actually collect and we can map them. You can do benchmark if, if you're like into data, if you want to choose the perfect cereals. No, you can. So it's highly customizable. You, in 20 seconds, you can do your own chart. We also have a, a platform for, for the food industry. So, whoops, sorry. Yeah, for the food industry to help them actually reformulate, we say, okay, here's a, an opportunity to reduce a little bit sugar, and then you will get a better nutri score. So, we compute all of that. And brands have started playing the game. Some of the brands you consume every day are actually se uh, doing open data and sending open data to open food fact. Even the big ones like Unilever, even Ferrero from uh, Nutella are, d are doing that. So they're starting to realize that consumer pressure is important. Uh, in terms of milestones, uh, so as I said, we launched Nutri-Score in 2015. We launched EcoScore more recently uh, and ultra-processing in 2018. So the project is a bit over 10 years old. Um, and this year, we crossed the 3 million products threshold, which is a nice milestone. Um, we are now at 3.1 million monthly visitors uh, uh, on the websites and the app, and uh, contributors together have made 28 million edits since 2018, and it's growing, it's still growing. Uh, the, the permanent team is growing. Uh, the community is much more engaged uh, this year than it, uh, than it used to be. Um, we, we're doing meet European meetups. Uh, we had our second Open Food Pack days uh, this uh, fall, and we are also uh, getting more people into coding. Uh, we also, this year, we also scaled app marketing so that new users uh, discover about open data, open source, and open food fact to 40 languages. And we started uh, getting into uh, European events and trying to get a com European committee off the ground and not just be a, a French project. Um, in terms of manufacturers, we, we introduced a few new features as well. Uh, manufacturers are getting on, on board. And even more important to us, a scientific use and reuse. Uh, we have 30 scientific papers in nutrition, in machine learning, uh, based uh, in 2023, and we uh, have increased the uh, reusers uh, a little bit as well. So what's cooking for 2024? Uh, it's going to be a big year, uh, first and foremost, because the Nutri-Score is going to change. The formula is going to become more, uh, more strict. Uh, you know that there's, uh, Italy is trying to block it at the European level. Um, 
and uh, scientists are overwhelmingly supporting Nutri-Score. Uh, seven countries have adopted it, and now it's the question of whether it will become the European score. Um, the new formula is going to be more stringent, like seven out of ten products are going to lose a grade. Uh, most of them are going to lose a grade. <laughs> um, and uh, it will be a two-year uh, transition in real life, but as soon as we start deploying it on Open Food Fact, it will be on every p the new computation will be on all products directly in Open Food Fact, even before producers uh, 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 do the transition. On mobile, it's going to be a big year. I'm going to go very fast uh, because there are only four minutes left. Uh, so we did a lot of uh, user interview this fall. And um, so we are going to make the app more pedagogical and to improve search. Uh, so here's a, a screenshot of all the ideas by the community. Uh, so we are going to improve uh, uh, the onboarding so that people better understand the scores. Uh, we are going to make the, the, the personalization engine more intuitive. Um, we are going to make yeah, the, all the information more legible. Uh, guides even to go further. Uh, for French people, uh, we are going to try and, and tackle the mineral water scandal. Um, and uh, improving search also thanks to the support of NGI, NGI search. We are going to have a live search in Open Food Facts. And this year, we are going to go beyond food. So the thing is, the, we, have, we have had an impact on food, uh, but there are many objects like, I know, this projector uh, or this chair, uh, which have a life cycle. And then at one point, the owner decides it's not worth keeping anymore. And as a result, we are surrounded by objects, but some of us no longer serve us or please us. And they end up in the incinerator because we fail collectively to give them a second, a third life, to repair them, to fix them. And so Open Product Fact is all about that, giving open data to power the circular economy. Uh, so today, uh, this year, we are going to merge Open Food Fact with Open Product Facts beauty facts and pet food facts so that you can scan anything on the planet and get solutions uh, for it. And yes, we, people have asked us for that uh, for years. We are getting into price collection this year. Uh, people, we started Open Food Fact to answer what's in my food, but now people want to know at what price. So we are starting Open Prices. Uh, currently, it's only a web app. It's only five weeks old, so it's still a very experimental project. Even the logo is experimental. Uh, <laughs> um, but basically, adding a price takes 20 seconds. Uh, you scan the barcode, you put the price details, you put the location. It remembers the two or three locations you inputted previously. And then you start to realize weird stuff, like, for instance, price variation in the same city for the same products, for the same supermarket chain, and nobody is a able to explain why. Um, we are also uh, thinking that we could kickstart a European uh, price collection and build the first European uh, Nutella price index. Uh, so we already have a few prices in Europe, but you'd be very welcome to add the prices nearby, near, near your, at your favorite shop. We are also, uh, this is more experimental, but we also would like to help people free their data from receipts. So now at this point, you are asking, how can I get involved in my country? So uh, we have a, a broad European coverage that's already there, but there's still a lot of work to do. So how can you contribute? Scan and add new products. That's the most basic, but the most vital way to contribute to Open Food Facts. Translations word spreading, taxonomies and design, so a lot of, uh, of uh, knowledge about food required, and uh, if you develop in any programming language, hacking and fixing is welcome. We have many, sorry, my slides are messed up, but we have many uh, programming language you can contribute, so the mobile app is in Flutter, uh, we have some machine learning, robot in Python, so uh, we are even experimenting with LLMs, and 60 seconds on the clock, um, Perl, Python, you name it, uh, there's, there's really something for you in there. So that's the QR code. If you want to become a volunteer, you can scan this QR code or, or go to openfact.org slash contribute. Um, also, if you're, if you're uh, 
a student or an adult, uh, you have a Google Summer of Code we are going to apply. So if you want to become a mentor, a mentoree, or refer a mentoree, feel free to do so. It's nice to have a large impact on food, uh, thanks to Open Food Fact. We'd also like to, we are independent from the food industry, by the way. <laughs> we are not like a startup or anything. So we'd like to thank all the sponsors that are supporting uh, uh, some part of Open Food Fact. And uh, so thank, uh, thank them for, to enable the infrastructure or everything. So I guess let's get in touch, eight seconds on the clock. Uh, you have uh, the contact email, my personal email, and you can install the app right here. Thank you. <laughs>